Artillery reached out to me to see if I wanted to take a look at the new SWX4+. Plus. Well, the SW actually stands for Sidewinder. Now, this isn't my first rodeo with reviewing an artillery product. I actually reviewed the artillery SW, X2, the original Sidewinder, and the Genius. And all of those had a common theme. They were really nice machines, but they would have a glass bed that wasn't removable. It had these ribbon cables and it had some blue injected molded parts. When artillery reached out to me, I just thought it was going to be more of the same. To be honest with you, I really did not expect to see what I'm seeing now. Artillery will be launching the SWX4 Plus starting at uh, 429 for their launch sale. Well, let's go ahead and unbox this uh, printer and see what main features it has. There is a max print speed of 500 millimeters per second, but 300 is about optimal. You got 300 by 300 by 400 print volume, a 300C all metal hot end, linear rails on the X and Y, a 4.3 inch touchscreen, 64 bit 1.5 gigahertz quad core processor, all metal direct drive extruder. It runs Clipper and has 121 point bed leveling. You'll notice that the bags are marked for each assembly step. You're going to want to clip off these uh, zip ties that's holding the Z axis in place and place the Z axis on the frame. Then you'll be sending two screws for each side. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you will need to lift the Z axis up. Assemble the spool holder, attach the stabilization rods and tighten them down. Do the same for both on the top as well as the bottom. Definitely want to make sure that after you screw them in that you tighten these jam nuts along and so that way everything is nice and secure. Attach the display bracket. Plug in your uh, little phone cord here, which is for your touchscreen display and use this magnet to hold it in place and attach your Wi-Fi antenna. Let's go ahead and secure the spool holder on top. Attach your filament runout sensor and plug it in and give it a little twist. Let's uh, go ahead and plug in the Z stepper motor, one over here and uh, one over here. And then you're going to just be plugging in for your LED lights and your filament runout sensor. Plug in your X axis stepper motor. Then we're going to attach the ribbon cable in the hot end assembly and secure it. It is keyed and it can only fit in one way and then tuck the ribbon cable in there. Of course, be sure to check the voltage before you turn it on. Now we got a leveled bed and look at that. You get a piece of leveling paper. How nice. There is a total of six leveling knobs and I had to do quite a few passes. After that's done, you have to do the Z offset. And then once that's complete, the bed's going to heat up and you're going to do the 121 bed points of leveling. This whole process took about, um, about nine to 10 minutes. And I actually wind up doing it twice. Now this printer does offer input shaping. It's pre-calibrated from the factory, but they do not supply the sensor nor the USB-C cord to actually do this task. So hopefully they'll be offering it in the future because not all surfaces are created equal. And I like to do my own input shaping. And that leads to today's video sponsor, PCBWay. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can, and they also offer other services such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. I'd like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring today's video of the SWX4 Plus. After you attach the SW Plus to Wi-Fi, go ahead and use that IP address and type it into a web browser so you can actually Control your 3D printer through the fluid interface. Here you can control your printer and you can actually see how the job's progressing and view your, the history. And you can also see how uh, good your bed mesh really is. Kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, going down a, a snow hill or something. But this will be a good test to see how well our bed compensation really is. So if you really want to take a deep dive into Clipper, you're able to do so by using the fluid interface. Since the touch screen isn't a Clipper screen, you will need to refer to the fluid interface for more advanced features.
now included on the USB is Artillery Slicer. Well, don't let this fool you. This is actually a Prusa Slicer, and um, yeah, it comes with its standard um, settings. Now, I went ahead and modified a few here, but uh, please just go ahead and modify the parameters that you feel comfortable with. Again, about 300 millimeters per second is what's more, more optimal than 500. But of course, you're here to see how this printer prints. So now, let's go ahead and take a look. So first I did their speed benchy. I think it's around 17 minutes that's included in there on their um, USB stick. And so far it actually doesn't look too bad, but then we see some really weird artifacts like right here, it's like a dent in the hole. I don't know what's going on here and the bottom layer may be missing one or two. So now we look at the deck here. It doesn't look all too bad, but then, hey, what's that? A hole. But then I noticed something during printing. <laughs> it has like 5% infill. To me, that's a little bit of a cheating, if you ask me. So then I decided to slice my own benchy here, and this is about uh, about 30 minutes. And this is with Polymaker Magenta, PLA Plus. And don't mind the bottom there, that is just some glue stick that I use because the temperature of my garage is really cold right now. So we got a little bit of stringing here, not too bad, but overall, this came out a lot better than its, uh, um, yeah, its speed benchy. So continuing on, I did this little cup, and this came out really, really nice as well. And I had no, no problems with this. I mean, it just really, everything just looks really crisp and clean. I believe this may have been at a 0.2 layer height. I mean, that's what it looks like. The bottom layer is literally perfect. Again, that's glue stick on the bottom. Again, very cold in the garage, so get used to seeing that. But everything just came out nice. And this was a precise file that I found on their, you know, the included USB stick. Another included file is this little organizer. You got a lot of straight and long running edges here. And again, everything just came out really, really nice. You got this really weird seam on here, on the edge here. But again, I did not know how this was sliced. This was on the included USB but all the surfaces feel nice and smooth and just going around and yeah, really, really nice. This filament is really good by Polymaker as well. Inside, yep, I have no complaints with this whatsoever. That seam definitely is really odd though, but the bottom looks really good as well. So it looks like this bed mesh leveling is definitely working. And continuing with the theme of uh, pre-sliced files that are included on the USB is this uh, scraper. The scraper is not very tough. I'm telling you that right now because it only has about 5% infill. And look at that. That first layer is really, really nice. And I don't know if I would trust this to scrape ice off my car, at least not for very long. Um, I did use it to take off a few parts for you know that were stuck really good. But it's a flexible spring steel sheet so but I want to get rid of this glue here and let's try something a little bit different because I'm tired of seeing that on the bottom of my prints so I washed it and now I'm using this bed cement by TH3D Studios and it what's nice about it 
it goes on clear. It kind of looks like deodorant, but don't get it confused. You don't want to glue your armpits together. But go ahead and generously put it on, let it heat up, and now we're going to do a first layer test. There have been lots and lots of requests to see first layer tests, and right there you can see you know, it didn't lay down that uh, first run very well, but the rest of it is looking somewhat okay. I think I need to adjust my Z height, especially right there and on the right hand side. And we peel it and look what happens. Yeah, doesn't look too good so far, does it? And then we got some good adhesion so far. Nope, <laughs> no good adhesion. Let's try it one more time. Adjust the Z offset. Ah, all right, not looking good here. So I re-leveled the bed again and um, let's try it one more time. This looks really clean, except for the lower left. It just doesn't lay that first line for some reason. And nope, <laughs> this is getting really interesting. But I think I know what the problem really is. This texture is super, super rough for this uh, PEI sheet. So I think that's what's causing it because in the prints, all the first layers look great. So then I decided to do a bigger print. This is a planter box. Yeah, I did some pretty thick walls on here because I want something pretty sturdy, whether it's used for a planter box or, you know, maybe a trash can or something. And look at that first layer. That looks pretty darn good. So again, that is a super rough PEI sheet. But, oh, we got a little blob there. That was actually during the filament change. It ran out and um, I put a new spool on. And it left a little bit of a glob there. But as for the rest, everything just looks pretty, pretty smooth. But you do see some ghosting along the edges. And that's why I would like to run my own input shaping to see if I could actually get rid of that. So where are my overall thoughts? What's the pros and cons? I really like how stout these uh, linear rails are. You get two of them on the, on the Y axis and then you have one on the X axis. And these are just super smooth. The touch screen is very vibrant and bright and has a great touch response to it. it. Has nice LED lighting to light up your work area included on the hot end assembly as well. You have dual Z stepper motors, a spring steel PEI sheet as well. And you got some nice Z stabilization rods to help keep the gantry nice and stiff. No more ribbon cables and the cable management is pretty good and some pretty good strain relief on the heated bed. Oh, I forgot to mention, yes, it'll wipe it for you. Yes, it wipes your rear. Check that out. It cleans your nozzle before every print. I think that's pretty darn cool. I have not seen a printer do that before. Now, how effective is it? Eh, it's tough to say. And some of the negatives. This has a timing belt, which means it doesn't have independent Z motors. It does have a direct drive, but I do miss having a wheel that I could turn to help unclog filament instead of just trying to pull and, um, and, and pray, so to speak. So having a wheel in the front will definitely help. And you have to adjust the tension with an Allen key. And my biggest gripe is these lovely knobs. You have two real nice linear rails. There is no need for these things. Yeah, I mean, there really shouldn't be any need for these six leveling knobs when you have two nice linear rails. Come on, just get rid of them. Hopefully I've given you enough information for you to decide if this printer is right for you. And if you've watched to the very end, well, I thank you. And Tillery thanks you as well, because guess what? You have a chance to win the SWX4 Plus. If you live in the EU or United States and 18 years or older, you do qualify. All you have to do is comment down below on what you will print with this 3D printer. Then in one month, a random person will be selected and please be on the lookout for a comment. Please respond to that comment within 24 hours. If you fail to respond within 24 hours, it will automatically be redrawn and another winner will be selected. Also from today till March 15th, if you decide to use the link below and purchase this 3D printer, you will also get free from artillery, five kilos of filament along with this 3D printer. Now that is a fantastic deal. Well, I thank you for watching this video of the artillery SW, 
X4 Plus. And if you could please like and subscribe, that would be absolutely amazing. Thank you again for tuning in to Tripods Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend whenever you decide to watch this video.